Here's something very special, a William Taylor crossbelt sewing machine. World famous sewing machine expert Alex Askaroff estimates that there may be as few as 30 still in existence, which is a shame because their unique design, excellent craftsmanship, and beautiful elegance demand attention in any collection. We're dating this to 1873 because by 1874, Taylor had a new patent, which isn't cited on this machine. The simplicity of the construction of the shuttle carriage and the design of the bob and winder mount suggests it may be much earlier. By 1876, this model was superseded by the slightly more graceful, improved Taylor. To thread, wrap the thread around the bar tensioner, through this thread guide, up to the take-up arm, and down between the frame and the rocker arm to the needle, threading it from right to left. If this bar tensioner looks familiar, it should, because a similar tensioning system is used on the household sewing machine. This Taylor cross belt is now the queen of our collection because she not only looks great, she also sews great. These machines are called cross belts because the belt that connects the hand wheel to the drive pulley makes a figure eight. This permits the machine to be cranked with the handle being pushed over the top, which is more comfortable for most people. But there are some problems with this system. The belt rubs against itself, creating a noticeable amount of drag and noise. Also, it's critical that the union between the ends of the belt be as smooth as possible, or the opposite belt can snag on it as it goes by. Finally, it's important to orient the twist so that the belt in the front is closest to the machine. If it's on the outside, the direction of motion and angle of approach may cause it to slide out of the hand wheel's groove. When this machine was purchased, the seller claimed that the patent number on the cloth plate was an unknown number and that that therefore increased the value of the machine. After a lot of research, I believe there's a lot of evidence that proves this isn't a patent number, but rather the machine's serial number. First, every patent citation I've seen lists the patent date, not the patent number. Second, every patent citation I've seen is machine stamped at the same time as the patent announcement. This makes sense because all the machines made in a production run would have the same citations and therefore the machine stamping would be faster, easier, cheaper, and look better. On the other hand, this alleged patent number is obviously hand stamped one number at a time. It would be an enormous waste of time and expense to have a man st hand stamp patent numbers for each and every machine. But the strongest evidence that this is a serial number is that it's repeated on the main body under the cloth plate. There's no reason to put a patent number where no one can see it. I'd appreciate reading anyone's thoughts about this in the comments section below. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video about our Taylor Crossbelt. Our next project is an 1883 Florence Crown sewing machine. I hope you'll check back soon to see how it comes out. Until then, thanks for watching.